Mr. Poe is currently Center Manager at DAS Bedo Learning Center, and he also teaches students with dyslexia. He recently completed his master's degree in special education with the National Institute of Education, NIE, um, and this study is actually a partial fulfillment of that master's course. Mr. Poe enjoys teaching students with learning disabilities and aspires to constantly explore innovative teaching strategies to inspire learning. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Poe. Mr. Paul. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for being here today uh, to, <clears throat> sorry, uh, for me to share with you uh, my research from NIE. The title is called Impact of Picture Book Illustrations on Children with Dyslexia. I hope that by the end of the day, you'll be able to at least gain something, some takeaways through my sharing session. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so the many of the day, 10 course. <laughs> why I embark on this study, I'll, exp I'll be explaining to you why I decided to do this study. I'll be talking a little bit about dyslexia, noting that it's a neurological, impact, uh, sorry, neurological difference. What are picture books, the impact of picture books, my research design, the findings, the conclusion, the limitations, and the potential for future research. So why did I embark on this study? Okay. First of all, it's my personal affinity with picture books. I grew up with picture books. A huge part of my literacy development is based on picture books. I remember reading many titles from the Ladybird series like uh, Three Little Pigs, uh, Three, uh, Three Billy Goats Graph, and so on and so forth. And um, they are very attractive to me because uh, it just piques my curiosity and I just want to read on. It's very attractive and never fails to amuse me at the same time. Okay, many studies have been conducted with picture books on learners with dyslexia. Uh, sorry, uh, many studies have been conducted on picture books with learners. Uh, we are talking about emergent learners, foreign learners, as well as ESL learners, but very few studies have been conducted on picture books with learners with dyslexia, especially pertaining to a literacy uh, component like comprehension and vocabulary. <clears throat> So I'd like to use this opportunity to explore the use of picture books um, illustration to see if it's possible to help bridge the learning gap of learners with dyslexia. But first of all, uh, we'll talk a little bit about dyslexia, understanding that it's a neurological difference. Okay, very quickly, dyslexia is understood as a phonological processing difficulty leading to poor word recognition, poor word decoding and spelling. The secondary difficulties of dyslexia, uh, sorry, due to poor phonological processing, is comprehension, writing, and vocabulary knowledge. So I'd like to highlight to you a very interesting uh, research conducted by Gershwin and Galabada in 1987. Okay, these researchers have discovered that through the MRI scan of the brain, neurotypicals have a larger left brain as compared to the right brain. Okay, so that is considered as normal. But for learners with uh, dyslexia, they have discovered that it's either symmetrical, meaning that the brain of the left and the right are the same, or that the right brain is larger than the left, which is atypical. So the extra cognitive effort required in phonological processing right, has led to a slightly more rapid development of the right brain. But of course, we understand that the brain parts have different functions. For example, the left brain, we know that the left brain has functions like um, uh, language, and what else? Language, um, working memory, sequencing, logic. But for the right brain, <coughs> for the right brain, it houses functions like creativity, visualization, imagination, and spatial awareness. So let's say if the right brain is larger, it should be assumed that, it could be safely assumed that the people with a larger right brain has enhanced visual skills and creativity. And therefore, that might lead to a, 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 an advantage when we utilize more visuals or graphics in the form of, in this research, for example, the use of picture books okay, for teaching to see if it's able to enhance the learning experience and create a more balanced literacy approach for these learners. Okay, so what are picture books? 
Okay, so these are some examples of multicultural picture books. They are also in my collection. And I've also used a few of these picture books for this research. And the impact of picture books on all learners, according to several researchers. Okay, as opposed to chapter books, which is a linear approach, you just text, picture books provide a multimodal approach to capitalize on uh, mostly learners that have a preference for visual learning styles. Okay, there's a meaningful integration of words and pictures to form meaning so that it is easily understood by the learner. Okay, picture books are also aesthetically very appealing, it's very attractive, very colorful, and it makes readers want to read on. And because there are more pictures, struggling readers find that picture books are less intimidating. So studies have shown positive impact on learners' literacy, literacy development. Uh, as I was mentioned earlier, right, um, a lot of studies have been performed on emergent readers, foreign readers, as well as uh, uh, foreign readers, uh, ESL readers. So in a nutshell, the combination of text plus illustrations gives the construction of meaning. Uh, this is a phrase that is uh, one of my favorites. It's very simple. A picture is worth a thousand words. Okay, in the context of picture books, picture books are short on pages, but long in meaning. Okay, let me give you an example. This is an extract taken from one of the picture books that was used in my research. Uh, the title of the picture book is called My Grandfather, sorry, Grandfather's Journey. So let me read to you. The last time I saw him, my grandfather said that he longed to see California one more time, but he never did. This extract is taken from this page. So from observing on the page, the learner is able to understand that the reason why the author is speaking so intimately about the grandfather is because of the relationship as you can see from this picture. Another example from the other picture book that I used for this research. The title is called The Lost Lake. So I went to live with dad last summer. Every day he worked in his room from morning to night, sometimes on weekends too. Dad wasn't much of a talker, but when he was busy, he didn't talk at all. So now let's observe this picture. So based on this illustration, you can see that both father and son are in a shared space, but they are both engaged in their own world, which creates a distance. The son, based on his body language, is bored. He's slumped on the sofa and he looks bored from watching too much TV. And true enough, in the picture book, it's described that he is bored because, of finish, because he finished reading his, his books and he's too bored from watching too much of TV. So an overview of my study, Okay, my participants are grouped into two groups. Group SWI, meaning storytelling with illustrations, comprising of two males and one female. There was supposed to be an additional participant, but he had to be excluded from the study due to absenteeism from the first uh, storytelling session. Group SW0 is the group without illustrations. So it comprised of two males and two females. And both groups are from one learning center at DAS, Age is between 10 to 12 years old, P4 to P6 level, and with one conducting teacher reading the picture books to these two groups. So these are the two selected picture books, Grandfather's Journey by Alan Say, and The Lost Lake also by Alan Say. So the reason why these two picture books are selected is because, first of all, Alan Say is a renowned, famous illustrator and author of picture books, and a recipient of numerous awards. In the example of this uh, grandfather's journey, right, he is, uh, there is a Caddy Medal Award in 1993 on this picture book. And the other reason is because these, picture, these two picture books are age appropriate for my participants. Uh, the third reason is because um, I'm a huge fan of Alan Say. If you, were to look, if you were to read his picture books, right, you realize that his pictures are very nicely illustrated. Okay, my research design, okay, it's a mixed method design um, with elements of uh, qualitative and quantitative aspects. So I'll explain. Okay, so, so first is the vocabulary test, which is a little bit quantitative, although I don't use SPSS to run through this. 
Okay, so 15 words are taken from each of the picture books and a pre-test is done individually on the participants prior to the storytelling session. And after the storytelling session, the same 15 words is uh, tested on the individual participant to see if there's a difference. Okay, so what the participants need to do is that they need to explain and describe the word to the best of his knowledge. The second part of, of the research is comprehension through retelling. So based on listening to the picture book, the participants explain the details and the events in the picture books and they are marked according to the correct detail that is uh, through re free uh, retell. Thirdly, there's an interview session done by the researcher on the thoughts and feelings on the participants. And lastly, the researcher, being myself, also sat through the storytelling session to take few notes and observation on the participants' body language, gestures, and behavior in order to gauge their engagement level. So simply, my research focus is on two groups, one with illustrations and the other without illustrations. So for the group without illustrations, what happened was that the, the entire story is uh, typed out on the A4 size paper, single sided page and given to them individually. For the other group with illustrations, each of them receive a picture book during the storytelling session. And the focus is on comprehension through retelling in order to gauge the understanding, the pre and post vocabulary tests, and importantly, right, is the engagement because we believe that if the participants are engaged and highly motivated, that would influence the results. So my research findings Okay, so this, these are the results from the vocabulary pre and post test. Okay, let's look at group SW0 to recap. SW0 stands for storytelling without picture books. So in picture book one, they scored an average of nine out of 15 words. That means nine words have been described correctly. In a post test, there's no difference. And I would also like to mark, uh, to find out if any of the words have been described with a more detailed description after listening to a storytelling session. So in this case, it's zero. For SW0, again, in picture book two, they scored five out of 15 words correctly on the average. In the post vocabulary test, it's six out of 15 with two words described with a more detailed description. For SW1, sorry, SWI, for picture book one, they scored an average of eight out of 15 words correctly. Post vocabulary test, it's 9 out of 15, and two words have been described in a more detailed description, which I'll be sharing with you later as an example. Okay, in picture book two, they scored 6 out of 15. After the storytelling session, they scored 7 out of 15, and four words have been described with a more detailed description. So this is an example. The word, for example, is canoe from the Lost Lake. So in a pre-test, this particular participant described it as a boat for two or three people to paddle on it. In a post test, he described it as need to paddle to move the boat, two or three people to sit on the boat, also wear a light vest and helmet. A canoe is like a small boat. So what's the difference here? He is able to describe with more confidence that a canoe is like a small boat based on what he observed in the picture book. He was also able to describe also wear a light vest and helmet which is also depicted in the picture book. Another example is the word homesick. So this participant described homesick very literally. Homesick is like being sick and staying at home. All right. In a post test, after observing the pictures in the grandfather's story, uh, sorry, the grandfather's journey, she described it as homesick is like when you feel sad when you are in a country like California, but miss your home country like Japan. So she was able to take reference from the story of the grandfather's journey and put it into context and explain it here. So the grandfather is Japanese. He enjoys going to California, but when he was at California for a long time, he misses home. So, so these are the results of the compression through retelling. For group SW0, again I repeat, storytelling without illustrations. So for picture book one, there are a total of 31 
details. And they scored an average of 9 out of 31, and that translates to 29%. In picture book 2, there were more details. In the lost leg, 46 details, and they scored an average of 15 out of 46, which is, translates to 33%. In picture book two, 1, for SWI, the group with illustrations, out of 31 details, they scored 9 out of 31, which translates to 29%. But in picture book 2, out of 46 details, they scored a 20 out of 46 on the average, which translates to 42%. So recording details in the picture book, so how are they marked accordingly? So these are some of the detailed examples, when to live with that and stay at home most of the time. So the, a student's correct response in this example is that he said, stay with that at home most of the time. So he's given a point for this. Another example, Luke finished his books and grew tired of watching TV. So he described it as, Luke finished reading and was bored watching TV. Why do you think he mentioned the word bored? Probably because of the picture that I showed earlier, right, that he was slumped on the sofa. So the results for group SW0, storytelling without illustrations based on engagement level, generally they are attentive, they participated well, they seem to enjoy the storytelling. I mean, who doesn't enjoy storytelling, right? Okay, they listened attentively. They did not ask any questions prior to the storytelling, during and after. In the interview sessions, all the participants agreed that they enjoyed the storytelling, but they would have preferred to have seen the illustrations in the picture books during the storytelling session. And they also recognized that by having the illustrations, it would make it more enjoyable and motivating, motivating to want to read on and it will also affect the retelling and the vocabulary test administration. What about the results in group SWI? Okay, the engagement level is the same. They were quiet. After about five to 10 minutes in the storytelling, all I could hear during my observation was just the flipping of the pages back and forth because the students were eagerly tracing the words and they wanting to look at the illustrations. At the same time, only the teacher's voice could be heard. Okay, their behavior is also a little bit more animated because one of them actually echoed after the teacher on some sentences in a form of mimicry. So during the interview session, all individuals, so all participants agreed that they enjoyed the storytelling session and they even described the illustrations as cool, artistic and like a cartoon movie. They agreed that the pictures helped with the recalling the sequence of the story and they really enjoyed the pictures. An interesting point to note is that they are also able to draw examples in the pictures to relate to their prior experiences. Like for example, one of the participants mentioned that he remembered that his grandfather also enjoyed traveling and has traveled with the grandfather before. So that gave him a feeling of nostalgia. So the evaluation of results it's very straightforward. There is a higher indirect vocabulary development in the group with illustrations based on the number of vocabulary words that were described in the greater detail. Moderate improvement in overall comprehension through retelling in group SWI. And they also displayed a higher level of engagement. And they also agreed that during the interview that they enjoyed the storytelling session and that motivated them to want to read on. So my conclusion, <clears throat> okay, my current research findings concur with the other researchers and that illustrations do support the complexity of text okay, by simultaneously referring to the pictures, the illustrations and the text that helps with comprehension and understanding of the story as well as vocabulary words. Okay, um, in the interview, the students also mentioned that, so the participants also mentioned that by remembering the pictures, it reduces the need to remember the text. He said that, I only need to remember the pictures in order to understand the sequence of the story. And most importantly is that the aesthetic appeal in the colorful pages and the picture books engages the participants and it motivates them to want to read on. Of course, all um, research comes with limitations and for mine, this research, this little research is a very short time frame of two story, two picture books in two weeks. All right. 
And also I played the dual role of a researcher, sorry, and a test administrator, which might lead to some biasness when it comes to a result evaluation. The sample size is small. There were only seven students in two groups, and all students were from one learning center, and therefore they all reside within the same proximity. Okay, these are my uh, recommendations for future research um, potential is that uh, I would um, prefer that if there were more picture books over and done over a longer time frame and over a larger sample size, maybe four or six groups of students uh, in a wider spread of demography, maybe over a few learning centers, north, south, east, west of, of Singapore, and also to include a blind observer to observe the storytelling session so preferably the observer is someone without any knowledge on dyslexia or picture books so that the observation notes can be taken without any biasness. I think I have come to the end of my presentation. And if you were to be interested to understand, to read more about the uh, cerebral lateralization theory by Galabada and uh, Gers Gerswin, it will be this three. All right. Thank you very much.